Hey, it's Nikki Thompson, and I am so excited to have you here for this free online workshop, which is all about pleasure over pressure. So this is a workshop I've been really passionate about putting together today. And it happened this morning in terms of experiencing why I wanted to bring this workshop to everybody because life happens and this is a, this whole workshop is about how to create some building blocks in your life and to create some foundations and rituals in your life so that when things do go a bit south that you can um, still enjoy life and, and head for what you really want and the feelings that you really want to be feeling on a daily basis. So I wanted to say thank you for joining in. If you're joining live, I would love for you to post a comment below and let me know where you're from. I love hearing where people are listening in from. That would be fantastic. And if you're joining the recording, please also do that um, just to see where people are from. You can also post your questions below so that and I can answer them throughout the live chat and live workshop. Or I will come back and answer those questions and respond to your comments. So feel free to do that. You can also message me if you have more of a personal question that you wanted to ask. I'm always happy to answer those. So I'm Nikki Thompson. I have spent the last few years talking about pleasure, talking about the wild woman inside of us and talking about how we can step out of the the molds and the, the, the pressures of being the the good girl essentially and how can we tune into our gut into our intuition and live the life that we really desire and my whole message and philosophy of life is about adding more pleasure into our life and I'm going to talk about today about why pleasure is kind of seen as more of a luxury and pressure is praised and I'm also going to be giving you some practical tips on how you can add more pleasure into your day, how you can start to break those habits that you probably acquired over a long period of time and what can your days look like um, so that you can set yourself up for more pleasure in the day. So one of the common misconceptions I get through um, messages from people, maybe some emails, maybe um, people... Uh, you know, just comment on some of the posts talking about pleasure. Now, pleasure's always been associated with the idea of sex and sexual pleasure only. And that's it. Like when we talk about pleasure, it's only about sex or something that happens in the bedroom and that's it. But that's not it. Pleasure is, uh, and it's becoming more and more common to use the word, pleasure is about having fun, having joy and feeling that deep level of joy inside your body um, as often as possible, right? So pleasure could be having, for me, it's having a hot chocolate in the morning. Like it's my one of my favorite things to do. That is so much pleasure for me. It's going for a morning walk and hearing the birds and seeing the sunrise. It is um, cuddling up with my kids on the couch of an evening to watch a movie, a family movie. Um, it might be going for a walk along the beach with someone who I care about. It could be phoning a friend and um, having them, you know, just having a chat with them. And for me, it's also indoor plants, as you can see, all three of my, <laughs> this is just my office. Um, I have indoor plants everywhere and indoor plants for me are pleasure, as well as crystals and crystal lamps. For me, there is something about these things that just feel beautiful and beauty and pleasure for me intertwine because having a beautiful environment makes me feel pleasure. It makes me feel <sighs> tuned into myself. So that is what I'm going to be talking about today and looking at the social kind of pressures and expectations on our lives that Pleasure is should just be kind of pushed aside and is irrelevant and should just be as a luxury once you've done all of the other things. And that pressure is more what is praised in the workforce, in life. So my story is I have been, um, I, I've grown up in Australia on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. I've been so blessed with 
living in such a beautiful area. I've grown um, up similar to where I live right now. Um, and I've traveled the world. I've done all of these incredible things and I feel so grateful. And I got to a point, you know, I, I went to high school. I got good grades in high school. I went straight to university. I got two degrees. I got married. I had children, bought house, did all of the things on this like checklist of being the good girl and doing everything right, not making a fuss, not being too noisy and um, not complaining too much, right? I ticked all of these things off and then I got to a point where I just felt like I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I just felt like I was doing the same day over and over again and I'm ticking and I'm being super ambitious and I'm trying to raise young children and run a business and do all these things and support my husband at the time and, and all of these things were happening and I wasn't happy and I couldn't work out why because... I had all of the things, everything was absolutely perfect, but I couldn't work out why. And I realized that through all of this time, I had not connected in with myself. I'd lost complete connection with myself completely. I'd lost connection with nature. I'd lost connection with my intuition. And for me, it was such an upheaval. It doesn't have to be such an upheaval for, for you watching if you haven't been through something like this. It doesn't have to be like that. But for me, it was a big wake up call that we need to do something here because I was very depressed. I was very anxious um, and I couldn't work out why, because I had all of the things that I'd ever, ever dreamed of. So I started working through things. I started seeing a psychologist. I started getting coaches and doing more and more personal development and um, starting to understand and break apart the fact that I'd spent so much of my life living within this, these, these barriers or these perimeters of what I should be living, how I should be living, and that you don't complain, you don't ask for help, you do things yourself. I wanted three children, so I should be able to handle three children. Um, all of these things were kind of coming up for me and it just came up and came up. And it continues to come up. I'm continuing to work on myself. I'm continuing to learn more and more about myself. And for me, there was also the element of my mum passed away before, um, you know, in my very early 20s when I was only 22. And I didn't have um, like this role model or this guide of how to be an adult, how to be a woman, how to be a mother. And so I felt like I was just fumbling around constantly and just doing all of the things around me and um, yeah, until I got to this point. So I've been coaching women for the past few years around um, tuning in to their intuition, stepping into their pleasure and creating more of the life that they really want to be living. And how do you get to that point? How do you get, like, how do you assess your life and break through some of the, the mind crap that's in there um, when outside looking in everything looks perfect well, where do you even begin with this you know and that's what I started looking at and it can take it always takes time and I'm always working on it myself but pleasure was such a key element and that's what I'm going to be talking about today so we often associate pleasure with more of the feminine side of things so we we have um, elements of feminine and masculine and it's got nothing to do with male or female it's just the feminine energy and the masculine energy and you'll have your own very unique balance of the two of them and there's no like you're going to have the perfect amount or the perfect amount or if you're if you are in a female body it doesn't mean you you've got more of the feminine energy in you and more and less of the masculine it's none of that but we have our own unique blend of feminine and masculine energy and what I've really learned over the last few years is that the is that society really values more of the masculine energy and we're kind of scared of the feminine energy. The masculine energy is the the doing, getting things done and being productive and ticking things off lists and meeting deadlines and all of those types of things and and doing all of the 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 actions, right? But the feminine energy is the feeling it's the the pleasure it's the emotional side it's the the softer side essentially and for a long long time and i'm talking hundreds and hundreds of years 
the feminine was always seen as the weaker side. And there is no strength or weakness in either side. And if we think about it, the, the feminine side of, of, of having a child, like that is requires so much strength, whether you want to have children or not. The, the fact that the, the female body was kind of created to be able to have children and grow it and then get it out of us is just quite phenomenal. So there's definitely no weakness in the feminine, but in as a society, we don't seem to value the feminine as much and we don't know how to really tune in unless you've got some incredible role models in your life. We're never taught to do that. So what I wanted to talk about was that the fem- the feminine side of us is really where that, that pleasure lies in. And because society really values more of the masculine and the doing things, that's uh, more what is what we focus on, whether man, woman um, or other, it doesn't matter. It's like it, we're always, um, as a society, rewarded and acknowledged more for the masculine um, things that we do in our life. So the pleasure is where it's at today in this conversation. If you think about what is going on in the world right now, especially 2020 and 2021 and moving into 2022, there is so much depression, so much anxiety, so much disconnection about what is going on in the world. And it, it doesn't matter what um, where you are in the world, we're feeling it. I've been very fortunate living where I live that we haven't had extreme lockdowns like there has been in other parts of Australia. And... We just feel like this whole disconnection and I'm seeing so many people depressed because we um, are not thinking of adding more pleasure into our lives. There's obviously so many other reasons why people are depressed. But for me, when I am in a state of depression or feeling super anxious, tapping into that feminine helps me feel connected, helps me feel grounded, helps me move through those emotions and deal with those emotions as opposed to blocking it. It's like, let's just get more and more, more and more done, um, which seems to be the solution for a lot of people. For me, having pleasure and beauty around me all the time, especially in my home, in my car, even on my phone, the way that I set up my phone, I make sure it looks beautiful and uncluttered because then when these are little reminders all around my house, of what is beautiful and so sorry my laptop is distracting me there um so i have indoor plants i have crystals i have um i painted a mural on my office wall because i wanted to see the beauty as a reminder for me all of the time i have beautiful journals that i write in i use cute mugs for my hot chocolate which is super cute. Owls are my favorite. Um, always is a reminder again of wisdom and connection. So I have these little reminders of pleasure all around my room, all around my house, in my car, even at work, around what it is to be, um, to remind myself to have more pleasure and more fun through the day. So I create little rituals in the morning, which set me up to have a great day. Now, obviously, things happen through the day, and I'm going to tell you what happened this morning as well um, in a minute. But things happen through the day, but because I've got these little reminders all around, it kind of helps to, to bring me back in. And one of the questions, and it's one of the most important questions I ask myself every day, is how do I want to feel today? How do I want to feel? And then from there, it helps me make decisions for the rest of my day. We are, I don't know if you've heard of Danielle Laporte. I remember reading about her work um, many, many years ago. And I remember her planning out her life and her journal and her year and all of those things based on what her feeling was for the year. How did she want to feel this year? Um, For me this morning, I wanted to feel connected. I wanted to feel connected to you guys. I wanted to feel connected to my children today. I want to feel connected to... Um, the work that I'm doing, that's what I wanted to feel today. So I put things in place and that's like the little reminder of myself throughout the day is connection. 
calm. Some days I want to feel calm, particularly if it's been a very busy week. Some days I want to feel more pleasure, you know, especially if I've been feeling a little bit overwhelmed and so much going on. It's like, how can I feel more pleasure today? What is going to tick that box for me? What can I do to set myself up for that? And that's obviously what we're talking about today. So what happened this morning is that I had planned this workshop a couple of weeks back because normally on this particular Wednesday, my children are at school and things are pretty clear for me to do this. Um, but this morning, two of my children are home with me and I was like, okay, that's going to be tricky. So they're at, at, actually at the moment watching a movie. I'm like, okay, that's all right. I still want to feel connection. I still want to feel connection for them. How can I do this? And then my sisters rung up. So we went grocery shopping. Well, not a full grocery shop. We took all the kids shopping and got some ingredients to make some scones and to make some cookie ice cream sandwiches, things that my son wanted to make. And so I spent time with my sister and my nephew and then we came home and then I spent time in the kitchen with the kids making the scones and the scones literally came out the oven about 10 minutes before um, this call. So I feel like I could have been like, oh my God, this is going to be awful. Um, I, I, I can't do all these things. This is going to be terrible. I'm just going to block the children out. You know, all of those types of things could have gone through my mind. But for me, I'm like, I still want to feel that connection with them. And I was so grateful I got to spend some time with my sister this morning. And I was so grateful I got to do these things with my children this morning. And now I'm going to do this call and still feel that connection through the day. And it hasn't made me wobbly, you know, and wobbly meaning I haven't got overwhelmed. I haven't got stressed. I haven't been thinking about that because it's always in the morning. It's like, okay, how do I want to feel today? What's going to happen today? Um, how do I want to feel by the end of the day? What do I want to achieve by the end of the day? And all of those things come through through my mind. So for me, it was a focus on feelings. How do I want to feel by the end of the day as opposed to all of the things that I need to achieve? Um, I really focus on one or maybe two things that I want to achieve by the end of the day, but really focusing on that deep-seated feeling for the day. So having the pleasure and the beauty throughout my environment, throughout my day helps me. So my morning rituals, I've identified what really lights me up. In the, in the morning? What really energizes me? What gives my body the fuel and the energy for me to live the life that I want to live, to have the feelings that I want to be feeling? So I used to um, really not focus on the foods as much. I've always eaten quite healthy, but I tend to be an emotional eater and really, really um, sensitive to sugar and carbs, like so sensitive and it drives me crazy and I feel like it's unfair. And so I would keep eating it and then I would fall asleep and be super tired and have massive amounts of brain fog and all of those things going on in my life that I wasn't able to feel the feelings that I wanted to feel. I wasn't taking care of my body the way I wanted to take care of it. So I started um, working with a coach and I started making things, putting things in place because I was doing all of these incredible things and I was having this beautiful life, but I just didn't have the energy to enjoy it. And I felt like that lack of energy was stopping me from doing a great job in my work. It was stopping me from connecting deeper with my children because I just was so tired at the end of the day when they got home from school. And I just couldn't do all of the things that I wanted to do. So I started to focus on how do I need to eat in order to have the feelings that I want to feel? How do I need to eat in order to have more pleasure in my life? And I started to realize that because I always thought that, you know, delicious foods, cookies, cakes and ice creams and all of these like comfort foods was pleasure. Now, yes, it's pleasure for my taste buds, but that's pretty much where it stops for my body when it comes to those types of foods. And it wasn't being pleasure. It wasn't pleasure at all for the rest of my body. So I started looking at um, different ways of eating that was really perfect for my own body. And that has made a world of difference. I can make better decisions and support myself. So I do set myself up first thing in the morning um, by thinking about, by creating these rituals and thinking about what is going to give me the energy for the rest of the day. 
So my mornings look like I, I get up, I have a lemon water with a little bit of salt in it to help my body kind of detox. Um, I then turn the sauna on because I have this sauna at the back. I go for a morning walk um, and I might go up the hill. I might go round the lake, whatever it is. Um, oh, like it's more of like a pond situation, but it's beautiful. And I go, I do that and I come home and I'll go in the sauna and then I'll jump in um, for a nudie swim every morning, which I love. Even through winter, I'll do that because it's kind of a mindset thing for me. Um, I'll do a meditation and I will sometimes do a workout in the morning, but otherwise I will do a workout later in the afternoon. And then I'll have a hot chocolate and I'll journal. And then I tidy up and get everything organized for the day and do all of those types of things. That sets me up. And that might take me anywhere between an hour, hour and a half in the morning. And, you know, if it had, a, if I would have been where my kids were so little still, like when they were only tiny babies, I would not be doing that. My morning routine would look vastly different. But my children are a bit older now and they're able to. Um, take care of themselves a little bit better and they don't need me through the night so I have more energy I get a full night's sleep most nights nine times out of ten and I'm able to do these things so your morning could look completely different you might not even be a morning person and exercising in the morning is the last thing you want to do but I want you to tune in I want you to think okay what is going to be this beautiful pleasure ritual in the morning that's going to set me up to feel the way I want to feel through the day what does that look like? And it's about tuning back in to what you want. This whole workshop is about pleasure over pressure. So not what you should be doing. If you feel like you should be exercising in the morning because everyone tells you to exercise in the morning, but you hate exercising in the morning, then don't do that. Think about what is pleasure for you. And for me, I really had to learn about the difference between tuning in and what I felt like doing that day and actually what was good for my body. And I learned that discipline was self-care. Discipline can be pleasure because for me, being disciplined in, in the way that I eat and fuel my body has allowed me to have more pleasure in all areas of my life. So we need to think about and be really honest and truthful to us. What is our intuition telling us? Tuning back in and choosing the pleasure over pressure. Because for me, it's also about not um, allowing the pressure of society saying, oh, you need to bounce back after having a baby with your body, or I need to be this particular size, weight, goal, whatever it is. But that's not true. In fact, if my for me, my goal was always to have amazing amounts of energy and feel strong and fit in my body. And that is what I wanted. Not a particular body shape for uh, some, you know, unreasonable or um, unknown source of what an ideal body would look like. Hmm. So the other part of pleasure, particularly when we're talking about pleasure over pressure, is about creating boundaries in our life. For me, I, I struggle. I struggle now and I've always struggled with it. I'm better now though about setting boundaries around my emotional state, right? I do not want to um, get into insane arguments with people. I do not want to... Um, you know, provoke things. I don't like there's all these boundaries that I have. Um, don't, you know, um, I don't want to be hurt physically. Like there's just some boundaries that we always just set because we just um, unconsciously do that. But there are so many important boundaries that I've been continuing to work on um, for myself. Now, this when we create healthy boundaries in our life with our children, with our partner, with family and friends, with people who we haven't even met yet, right? When we create these beautiful boundaries, we can establish 
um, more pleasure in our life and more because we're able to tune in and listen to ourselves. So for me, one of the boundaries I have, um, particularly at the moment, is very limited social media interaction. I love to post things. I respond to people through my pages and stuff. Um, and there's a couple of people who I will continue to interact with, but very limited. I do not scroll. If I sit, find myself starting to scroll on social media, my phone is off and put away. Because for me, it impacts my emotional state, which is crazy because I've been doing online and online marketing and online business for nearly 10 years. But that is something that I noticed, particularly this year, was deeply affecting my emotional state. So that was a boundary I put in place. Um, certain time frames. I don't do. I don't check emails or other people's agendas in terms of social media and emails before I've done my stuff. So I will go for my morning walk. I will do all of these things before I check emails, before I look at social media. Um, and that is a boundary that I've put in place to support me better. Um, I also have a, a boundary for my children that um, when I'm journaling, they're not allowed to interrupt me. Or if I'm meditating, they're not allowed to interrupt me. I let them know and I come into my office and it's very quiet. And that is a boundary I set with my kids and they know that. Like right now, I set a boundary around I'm doing a workshop. You can't come in unless it's an emergency. Um, have you got enough snacks, enough drinks? Are you feeling okay? Everything's good. And then I could come in here and they know not to come in unless it's an emergency. I've also put them in two very separate rooms so they cannot fight. So fingers crossed that, that works because it doesn't always work. They always seem to get magnetized to each other for some reason. The boundaries are really important. I found that I wasn't, the pleasure was being sucked out of my life when I wasn't putting up boundaries because I felt like, that wasn't okay. Like I felt like I shouldn't be able to put these boundaries up. Um, I felt like I'm not being a good mother if I didn't want to be with my children 24 seven. So I would never take time out for myself. Um, I felt like I had to do, you know, all the drop offs and pickups and stuff like that. Um, so I always felt like I couldn't put those boundaries in place since putting those boundaries in place about four years ago. It has make, made a tremendous difference. However, I still need to continue to work on those feelings. So one of the reasons why we often don't put boundaries in place is because we don't feel like we deserve it or what will other people think? And that's the pleasure over pressure message here of today's workshop. The pressure is often these um, imaginary or invisible um, little strings that are, are being pulled for us. So it could be what do what will other people think of me if I do this or say this or think this or whatever it is. Um, what are other people expecting of me? Like these expectations of how I parent or how I, I am as a woman or, or what I say, what I do for work. All of these things, all these expectations are there as well. And so these little invisible strings are just pulling us constantly that can tear us apart. And putting boundaries in place can actually be our first step to starting to um, cut those little invisible strings that are pulling at us. So creating boundaries, it takes some courage. It really does. It takes courage to do that. It will take time. Do not expect that, okay, this is a boundary I'm setting and it's never going to be broken because for me, it takes time. Sometimes I'm like, oh, okay all right, you know, I'll let that in. And then upon reflection, I'm like, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Why did I do that? Maybe I was tired. Maybe I hadn't been looking after myself. Maybe there was something that happened and blah, blah, blah. But I'm always compassionate about myself. And again, the pleasure side of, or the pleasure piece of our life is about having more compassion for ourselves. Pleasure is something that we deserve and it's something that we we actually desire. We desire to have fun and joy in our days. We desire that. What 
what that looks like for you is different for everybody. And that's what I want you to do is to tune in and find out what is pleasure to you. What do you actually want to be incorporating into your life? Um, and what little reminders can you have in your environment to remind you to have more pleasure, have more joy in your life, such as indoor plants. Indoor plants is a great one. Um, I know that there were so many delivery companies doing indoor plants. It's quite the situation at the moment. Well, where I live anyway. So I have um, I actually took my son shopping the other day and we just bought heaps of indoor plants. So he's telling everyone how much money I spent on indoor plants, which is quite funny. He just thought it was ridiculous and it wasn't even that much money. But my whole, like a whole wall near the dining table has indoor plants now, which I love. And again, it kind of lights me up. It's like, yes, this is awesome. It's that, I don't know, indoor plants just have this energy. Anyway, moving on from the indoor plants, Nikki, we don't need to talk about that anymore. But again, pleasure is often seen as a luxury and we need to change that because when pleasure is seen as a luxury, we feel like we don't deserve it. We're not going to schedule that into our lives. And that's where we start to see more and more people feeling depressed, feeling isolated, feeling anxious about life, doing, 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 doing all day long, but never feeling happy with their life. And that is a big problem. And that's what I'm all about. I'm all about supporting women to tune into their gut, to tune into their intuition and think, okay, whew, deep breath. If I was to take away all of the expectations of family, friends, society, governments, schooling, um, working, all of those things, if I was to take away all of those external pressures, what would my life actually look like? What would I really desire? And for me, that's what pleasure teaches me every day. I... In, it is part of my life because I know that no matter how much work I do, no matter how, to, how much money I make, no matter what all of those like masculine things that I tick off, it will not make me happy, right? We need to be happy in ourselves right now. And for me, what makes me happy is connecting with my children to have a beautiful environment that I enjoy being in. And um, and discipline, self-discipline actually makes me happy because I'm not just thinking about Nikki today. I'm thinking about Nikki tomorrow and next week and next year. And that discipline applies to the way I eat and take care of myself. It, it, it applies to it, um, the way that I spend money. You know, it's not just thinking about today's Nikki because I am passionate about adding more pleasure, more joy into our life. But it's not about just like blowing all your money because of what is the word? Um, you only live once. YOLO. You only live once. So yeah, I'm just going to go spend this money. That is actually not what I'm about. It's about who do you want to be today and who are you desiring in the future? What does that look like and what can you do to set yourself up for that? So I want to give you some practical ideas as well before we finish up with this workshop. Um, and I also wanted to let you know about the Pleasure Program. So the Pleasure Program is a program, it's an online program that I started running last year. It goes over three days. So there's a, a video per day. It's about an hour long. And I talk to you about all elements of pleasure and what does it look like in your life and how can you set yourself up properly for this? How can you really tune in? And I give you a lot of, I'm going to give you some practical stuff today. Absolutely. But in the program, I dive so much deeper into the, the whole concepts behind pleasure. What, what is this? Um, I've really just kind of gone surface level today um, because it's only a shorter workshop. But the pleasure program is where we dive deeper into it and you can ask your questions and you can um, get involved and see and set yourself up for planning your life with pleasure in mind. So the pleasure program is $111. That's in Australian dollars. So it's, I don't know, maybe 80 US dollars, something like that. 
Um, and over the next 48 hours, there's also some extra bonuses. So I'm going to do a behind the scenes video where you can um, see exactly how I plan my days and my weeks, how um, my morning actually looks like. And I'm going to take you kind of behind the scenes and do a little video there. And um, that's going to be a little extra bonus. Uh, in 48 hours, so at the moment, the course is $111. And then in 48 hours, it is going up to 155 um, before the end of the month. So, well, in 48 hours anyway. So if you would like to join in, I'm going to pop the link below this video. And you can also send me a message if you have any questions. Um, if you have any questions about signing up to the course or about the program, I would love to answer them for you. So um, check out the link below. We'll give you most of the details. If you have any other questions, let me know. So that is diving deeper, deeper, deeper into what I've been talking about today. But I wanted to give you more of the practical tips of um, incorporating pleasure. So I have added them throughout this workshop so far. So I talked about creating my own morning routine or ritual because for me, that helps set me up for pleasure through the day because then I've got the energy to enjoy my day. I do not want to ever go back to like dragging myself through the day thinking far out when are the kids going to bed so I can go to bed. I don't ever want to live like that anymore. Um, and I don't, not for a while now, but that is a big thing. And that starts with my morning routine and I have an evening routine, but that evening routine is about 10 minutes. And it's really just, again, tuning in and spending that 10 minutes. And you can do it when you're on the toilet if you need to. Um, I know that people don't have a lot of spare time. But for me, if you are overwhelmed, feeling like shit, feeling depressed, feeling like, how could I, you know, I have all of the things. I've done all of the right things. How am I not happy with my life? Then you absolutely need to spend more time on this kind of stuff the journaling, the rituals, and this type of, this level of work, because you will just continue to live that way until you break through, until you break through and truly understand what is going on in your life. So um, the daily question that I spoke about earlier, and that was the really important question, is how do I want to feel today? Write it down. Now, again, I know people are busy. You could just do that on a Sunday night, right? I always plan out my week on a Sunday night. I look at my calendar and I'm like, okay, this is going to be a bit too busy on Tuesday. Let's just move things around here. This is what needs to get done. Where can I fit it in? All of that kind of stuff I do on a Sunday, after, uh, Sunday evening. So what you could do is like, how do I want to feel this week? Perhaps you've had a bloody busy weekend and you are exhausted maybe the kids are exhausted or you're just feeling um, overwhelmed with life completely maybe this week you want to feel calm or maybe this week you want to feel connected to people perhaps this week you want to feel organized so that the following week you have things a bit more you're you're kind of you're not falling into the, the week you're you're coming into the week with some organized, um, maybe an organized home, organized fridge, those types of things always make me feel a bit more energized. One of the things that I've always struggled to explain, but I'm sure if you're watching this, you've experienced, is the amount of brain power that is required with the invisible lists that we have for our life. I want you to start to actually write those down. Now, for me, I use Google Keep. It's an app, free app on your phone, on your iPad, desktop, whatever it is. Google Keep, K-E-E-P, that you can just write notes down. And I go in and I'll just be like, okay, this week, these are the things I want to get done. I'll, again, I'll do this. I'll start this on a, on a Sunday afternoon. I'm like, okay, I really need to mop these floors. They're filthy. It's been several months. <laughs> okay, at least a month maybe more. Um, I really need to vacuum my car or I really like, what are the things that are just floating around in your mind that you need to get done? One of the things that had been floating around in my mind for ages was that I needed to sign a permission form for my daughter, which would take two seconds. I just couldn't be bothered to look for it. And I kept forgetting to look for this form. 
So it was just floating around in my mind constantly. All these little tiny things take up brain power in our mind and make us feel more exhausted than we need to be. So that is another thing that I would love for you to do because it can help us have more space in our brains and in our days to to seek out more pleasure. Um, And I would love for you to find something in your home, whether it is an indoor plant, as you know, I'm quite a fan. It could be a beautiful crystal. It could be a candle, um, whatever it is. And put that in somewhere very obvious. Maybe it's right next to your um, basin in the bathroom. It could be on the kitchen bench, wherever it is. As your reminder that you are now a pleasure seeker through the day, that this is a priority. It's no longer seen as a luxury. Pleasure isn't a luxury anymore. It is part of your life. And you will start to energize yourself because pleasure energizes us. Getting all of the tasks done, yes, we still need to do that, but that often drains us. Pleasure can and like just um, energize us in ways that we can't even explain. And that's why for me being outside, my morning walks are always outside because nature just energizes me in ways I don't even understand. But as soon as I go outside, as soon as I start gardening or I just lay on the ground or go for my walk, I always feel so much better about myself. So incorporating these little elements of pleasure in our life. And I would love for you to have some significant reminder on your bench or kitchen or somewhere so that you are saying from this moment, I am a pleasure seeker in all elements of my life. So I really, really want to say thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching this workshop. Thank you for taking the time out for yourself to really Start to dive into something deeper. Dive into something that has just been in your mind. It's like, oh, I just, there's something there that you've been feeling that you just couldn't put your finger on. And I would love for you to come and dive even deeper inside the pleasure program. This is one of my favorite programs I've ever, ever run. And the feedback has been phenomenal, which is so, I don't know, it fills me so much because I know that this is the kind of stuff that I needed to hear so long ago and I wish I had have known it earlier. And we say that about all of the significant things that happen in our life, but I do, I really wish I had have learned this earlier. And I'm so grateful that there is, it's becoming more and more um, part of people's conversations around women and pleasure and enjoying life and not just, you know, having it all. But whose all is it that we are seeking? And I just felt like it wasn't my all that I was seeking. It was everyone else's expectations. And I've started doing this work and I love sharing this work. So if you would like to join, I will pop the link underneath this video. Send me a message if you have any questions at all. It is $111 for the next 48 hours um, and then it will go up to $155. That's Australian dollars and you'll have lifetime access while the course is up. You'll have full access to the course. Um, And yes, please let me know if you have any questions. I will always be happy to answer them. I hope you have the most incredible afternoon and I'm off to finish my hot chocolate and go and see what my children got up to while I was in here. All right. Have an amazing day. I'll talk to you later.